Welcome back to Garza Gaming Channel. Today we're going over Season 8 and there is this is going to be a huge update. We're talking about God buffs, God debuffs, item inclusions, item reworks, item nerfs, item buffs. I mean it's just insane. A ton, a ton of starter items. Uh, it's just amazing uh, what this um, season passes. I mean, the season, new season eight is going to bring. And then we have the new season passes starting up here on January 26th. But man, we have a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. So here we go with season eight update. Now we have a lot of information to put out, so let's get started. Okay, so as we all know, season eight update notes, right? So the big thing that's going to happen, I believe that it goes live on um, January 26. Now nowhere in here could I find that season eight starts January 26, but it says that January 26, the most wanted battle pass starts, season pass for 2021 starts, you know, the, uh, the Dawn of Babylon event, a Valentine chess, blah, blah, blah. So I think that season eight starts on the eighth. Now, for all of you subscribers that are asking me at the end of November or early December, they should get the battle pass. I'm, I hope you listen and or, or took my advice and didn't get it because the new battle pass actually starts January 26th. And like any of other battle, battle pass is going to unlock all your gods in addition to giving you some more perks, 1,000 gems and some skins. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the price for the Ultimate God Pack has went back to normal. So it's now $29. So if you're wanting to get an um, Ultimate God Pack, uh, it makes more sense really to get the Season Pass if this indeed unlocks all your gods forever and not just for the season. Uh, reading this, it pretty much says that all the Season 8 gods... Uh, and incredible content for each will be available all year long uh, with this season pass. And it says you'll immediately enjoy it, you know, but uh, all year long. So hopefully after the year, you still get all the gods for free. If not, I wouldn't even waste my money on it, dude. I just get an ultimate god pack and call it a day unless you wanted uh, these skins and stuff, right? Okay, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, so one of the biggest things that's going to happen, and oh man, this is really going to affect Arena, is they're changing the way healing is done in Smite, uh, whether it be heals or lifesteal. So what they're doing now, they're actually adding a map-wide Aurora where if you're not, if you haven't um, caused any damage, if you haven't uh, attacked an enemy god, not minions, but an enemy god within the last six seconds or CC'd them or um, received damage or CC within four seconds, um, you actually get a 30% reduction in healing and life steal um, debuff. So I guess, uh, you know, in Conquest and a lot of other modes, um, people that could heal or gods that could heal would back up and um, heal themselves and then go back into combat. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to avoid uh, gods that have the high life steal or the ability to heal themselves to be able to come out of combat, maybe AOE a bunch of minions, get full health, and then go back into combat or just heal themselves like a hell. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty big, actually. Uh, in addition to that, though, they pretty much nerfed all the debuff items you have and then buffed a lot of the healing items. So, for instance, Divine Ruin, uh, the anti-heal got decreased from 40% to 35%, and the duration of it actually got uh, reduced by 2 seconds, from 8 seconds to 6 seconds, which, you know, is, is pretty significant. Brawler Stick, almost the same. I mean, it is exactly the same. Toxic Blade it went from 20% uh, reduced by 2.5% to uh, 17 15.5 percent uh, anti-heal and the same we got reduced from by two seconds in duration uh, pestilence 20 by five percent uh, contagion by five percent as you can go down everything pretty much got down you know five percent and then you got Shuri uh, still uh, shadow still shuriken not only did it get nerfed but it kind of got reworked this item actually received additional balance changes and we'll get into that further in this um, video now the rod of healing actually got increased healing by uh, from five percent to ten percent but it no longer increases by five percent when taken or dealing damage which i mean they're going to give you a hard extra ten percent or by 15 I'm sorry. Yeah, so if they're going to give you a hard 10%, then it really doesn't matter, right? 
So Rod of Calypsus uh, increased healing by, from 10% to 20%. So that's pretty much a, what, 100% increase <laughs> from 10 to 20, right? So it no longer increases by 50% while taking or giving damage. But, I mean, yeah, you know, you lose 50%, but it's a hard 20%, uh, extra 10%, you know, the whole time. So it is what it is. But yeah, that's the biggest thing on and when the healing error. But man, a thirty percent healing debuff, I, that could be pretty significant. And an arena, I don't know, because arena's always so high tempo that you really don't have many healers or or like an Anubis or something that really is out of combat <laughs> too long to really benefit. I mean, some of them probably do, but not as much like a conquest or any of those other modes, right? So I don't think it's really going to affect arena much, to tell you the truth. Okay, so we already talked about the healing uh, debuff. Okay, so now there's going to be, they introduce a bunch of starter items. I mean, when I say a bunch, I'm talking this list just keeps going on. So I'm not going to get into all these starter, starter items. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a link in the description of the video to this update notes. And you guys can like scroll through these and look at these on your own. Because when I say they added a bunch, <laughs> I mean, this list goes on for a good minute. So, uh, yeah, I'll, like I said, I'll put that link in the description of, of this video. Okay, so let's get into the balancing items and gods. So one of the big um, items that they that are, they balance is elixir of power. They now added uh, provides ten percent penetration. Now realistically, elixir of power this is like an end game item, and not many people really get to use it. To tell you the truth, at least nowadays, now a lot of people, some people use it. Don't get me wrong. Heck, I even use it on certain gods if I can actually <laughs> build that quick. So it's not much of an. Uh, uh, a big change really same thing with elixir defense you gain five percent mitigation you get crowd control reduction usually tanks that take advantage of this already have max uh, crowd control reduction anyway now this could be significant the shield of thorns actually got debuffed by 10 percent and they capped the max damage from 150 points of damage down to 120 so they took away 30 points of damage per hit from the shield of thorns so you know that's a little bit of a hit there so Witchblade. So now Witchblade actually builds off Adventure's Blade, which, whatever, and but it no longer provides attack speed. So that that kind of sucks. Now, but on the other hand, it does provide 30% uh, physical protections. So now it could probably be used by you know you could probably use Witchblade more effectively in a Bruiser type build, and they increase the attack speed reduction or from 20% um, to 25%. Um, wing blade now uh, decreased the health from 300 to 250 so they took away 15 health but now provides a uh, 30 magical uh, protections so that's not bad relic dagger increased health from 300 to 350 now provides 10 percent crowd control reduction emperor's armor increased physical protections from 50 to 60 that's pretty good uh, talisman of energy now provides maximum stacks on a god death or an assist i don't really use it but whatever okay so this is a good one because john's wrath is a, a, an item we use on a lot of our builds um and what they ended up doing is actually increasing the physical power by 10 from 40 to 50. so that's pretty good that's definitely pretty good stone cutting sword all they did is decrease the cost of it so you can build it quicker berserker shield they decreased the um physical protections by 10 from 30 to 20, increase physical power from 40 to 50, and increase physical power from Berserker passive from 20 to 30. So all they did is they made it more of an office of um, type item, uh, more than a defensive type. Uh, the rest of these are just like whatever. Now, Shredded Edge. Shredded Edge is also another item that we use on a lot of our builds. And what they ended up doing is they actually prov uh, now provides 10 physical power per stack. Whereas before, it actually it added 10 points of basic attack, basic attack power uh, per stat. So I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, I want to say that this is probably going to give you less damage. I could be wrong, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see, right? Um, but at least they didn't take away any more movement speed or life steal or anything crazy like that. Uh, Celestial Legion Helm. They increased the magical power from 60 to 70. It's pretty good. 
another big one right here and this is one of my favorite um, items spear desolation now what they ended up doing is before spear desolation when you ended up getting an assist or a kill on an enemy god you had all your cooldowns reduced by two percent well now when you kill a god or assist on a kill a god you still get that two percent on all your um cooldowns except for your ultimate on your ultimate you actually reduce your cooldowns by eight seconds which is pretty significant especially if you're a zeus or a, uh, a Cuckoo Con or something like that that uses really high AOE where you're constantly going to be getting those assists, a new wall, you know. So that could make for really quick, uh, a new wall <laughs> with additional 8 seconds per assist uh, on her ult, oof. That's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. Definitely gonna be interesting. So then we got Obsidian Shard. They actually increased the magic uh, item power from this by ten, from seventy to eighty. So I mean, realistically, to me, uh, Obsidian Shard still not interesting enough for me to use. If they raise it to one twenty, maybe, but. Eh, it is what it is. Polynomicon, they ended up increasing the magic power from uh, by 10, from 85 to 95. That could be pretty significant. Uh, I started experimenting with Polynomicon on one or two of my builds. Now, Karan's Coin, they just changed some graphics on it, whatever. Now, Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is another um, item that I really liked. And they had already bu uh, debuffed it before. I think they brought it down from 110 attack power down to like 90 or something. I can't remember. It was something ridiculous. Um, but now they even buffed it, uh, debuffed it again. So what it is is now it no longer provides 10% magical penetration. So they took away the pen from this awesome item. Uh, so first they took away its attack power. Now they're taking away the pen. Uh, they did decrease the cost of it so you can build it quicker, but they also increased the health damage at maximum strength from 7% to 9%. So what they ended up doing is that little passive um, damage it does, they raised it by 3%. Um, could be significant, uh, especially against tanks, especially if you already have high penetration. This could actually work well, but if you're you know relying on this to get you at that 30 percent um penetration because uh, 30 and above is good you know right 20 percent presentation unless you got flat pen yeah so we'll see we're gonna have to see how this plays out and it sucks too because i started using this actually on my baron and my and i was experimenting with my nox build so i'm gonna have to see how this works out rada to hoodie Rada to hoodie what they did is they took that that soul reaver uh pen and they're like hey let's just throw it on rod to hoodie <laughs> So Rod to Hootie now actually provides 10% a magical penetration. I think that's going to be huge. I th really do think that's going to be huge. I'm definitely going to have to experiment with that. Especially on like a Zeus. Oh man. Or a Nuwa. Or maybe even a Nox. I might even have to try a Rod to Hootie on Nox. We'll see. We'll see. But that I think that's going to be pretty significant. Now another one that got um, changed was a do or a nerf was Doom Orb. and Doom Orb is another item that I just started adding to my uh, Zeus builds, uh, the Cuckoo Con builds. I mean, um, just a few other, maybe even a Baron sometimes, because I enjoyed having that extra uh, movement speed, right? In addition to that heavy attack power, but. You know, it is what it is. They just ended up decreasing the movement speed by 2%. So now you went from 6% to 4% uh, reduced movement speed. 2% uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you play Zeus and he feels like he's always running in Jello, 2% <laughs> could be pretty significant. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, Shifter Shield, they increase the physical protection from 15 to 25%. Increased protections gain under 75% health from 35 to 40 and decrease the cost uh, by 50 gold Eh, whatever frost uh, bound hammer increase the physical power from 25 to 35 so they gave it 10 more points of um, physical power which is really good really good I actually loved using this on my um, Scotty sometimes but definitely I use I have a build with uh, Artemis as you guys know where I used actually the frost bound hammer and the ruins for hammer together and it works beautifully uh, especially with her passive but they increased the power of that by 10 increased attack speed reduction uh, by 15 from 15 percent to four, uh, 25 percent so not bad especially if you're boxing with artemis that's going to be huge uh reinforced hammer they increase the health um from 20 that you get from it by 50 uh, points of health so it went from 200 to 250 but they decreased the power from 50 to 40 so if you use it in conjunction with 
and that's probably why they know a lot of people are going to use in conjunction with the frostbound hammer. You know, they just added 10 there then when they took it away from here, right? So, I mean, it is what it is, dude. And then they increase the passive uh, from it, from the dam, but they increase the passive damage from 15 to 20%. I think that this combination is going to be pretty deadly on Artemis. I really do. And I'm definitely going to try it out. So we'll see how that happens, what happens with that, right? So the sledge, the sledge is another one of those awesome items I love using, especially with my assassin builds. That's usually one of the first things I build. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, that thing is awesome. Uh, but they're decreasing the health from it from 300 to 250, and they're decreasing the protections per stack from 10 to 8. That sucks, dude. <laughs> that really sucks. That is a big kick in the crotch uh, for my Arachne build. Um, and a couple other builds, um, maybe a Loki. I use it on my Loki and my Arachne and my, my Assassins because I'm telling you, this thing was awesome as the first item on, on a lot of my Assassins because it gave you that extra survivability but not at a cost of giving up too much attack power. So yeah, that's going to suck, but we're going to have to see how that plays out. Shield the regrowth to decrease the movement speed on, from the passive from 40 to 30%. 10% um, reduction, that's pretty significant and then they added ended up adding uh dominance this is a new item uh it's going to cost you 2500 gold but it's going to give you 55 physical power it's going to give you 200 mana uh, plus 20 mp5 which in arena who gives care who cares um 10 percent physical uh penetration which is really good now the passive for this what it is is your basic attacks benefits from an additional 10 percent penetration so you're already going to have 10 percent penetration but uh maybe like on a hunter or an assassin maybe this will work pretty good to get that extra um 10 percent penetration from your basic attack um Atlantius bow decrease the physical penetration from 20% to 10% Ooh, that's pretty significant. That is pretty significant um, I don't use Atlantius bow too much, but I know that a lot of my subscribers do and that's gonna hurt dude 10% that's, uh, We'll see we'll see so and then they, they decrease the cost by you know, what 250 gold so you you can build quicker This is another interesting one executioner uh, execution we actually use on a, a few of our builds, uh, especially those builds for those guys that you use a lot of basic attacks, right? So they actually increase the stack count from three to four. So you can now put four stacks of executioner on a, on a god. Who for? I'm thinking Cupid maybe. Uh, him to leave. A lot of a lot of the uh, uh, hunters are really going to benefit from this. They I think they are. Um, it's, and what it does is it goes from 21% penetration to 8% penetration total. So it's going to give you a 7 more percent penetration against uh, heavy gods like uh, uh, maybe a Hercules or a Ymir or a Cthulhu. That's going to be pretty significant. That's going to be an interesting one to see. 8 point Shuriken that no longer provides critical strike chance. Yeah. Increase power from 15 to 25 and decrease the cost by 100. All upgrades still remain the same for this one. Okay, so you don't get a critical strike at the early stages of this. Whoopie doo. Um, but yeah, yeah, who cares? Rage. Okay, this is another good one. Rage, the physical power from this, actually, they increased it by 10%. Because, dude, Rage. Awesome for crit. It was garbage for attack power. And it's still kind of weak. But they did give you... Uh, so I think what max from Rage, you get like 40% uh, crit at full uh, once it's full. Uh, but now you're going to get that extra 10 attack power, which is going to work well with um, in conjunction with other items. Maybe, heck, even a Deathbringer. And speaking of Deathbringer, that's another item that they actually increased the attack power in Deathbringer from 40 to 50. So if you were using both of these in conjunction, now you just got a 20% attack um, increase, a physical item power increase, which is pretty significant, actually. Um, uh, Shadow Steel Shuriken. What they ended up doing with Shadow Stone, uh, Steel Shuriken, they actually increased the physical power of this from 30 to 40, which is pretty good because I thought that this thing lacked attack power. So another little 10% buff is actually pretty cool. And they actually increased the attack speed of this from 10 to 15%. Now, this item receives additional changes outlined in the anti heal section. Yeah, we already read the anti heal section, right? Decrease the, you know, by two seconds, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
this thing, I think this was a cool item, and it definitely needed a little bit of a buff because I think very few people actually used it. To tell you the truth, I know I didn't use it in my builds because of the lack of um, crit and the lack of um, uh, physical item power. Okay, Wind Demon. Increase the critical chance of Wind Demon from 15% to 20%. That is huge. That is awesome. Because I do use Wind Demon, as you guys know, in a lot of my builds. So I definitely I definitely welcome that. Now, Poison Star, what they ended up doing with this, they actually decreased the cost of it. Who cares? And then they decreased the Poison Slow from 15 to 20. So pretty much Poison, uh, poison Star is now garbage. <laughs> No, I mean, I guess some people can still use it. I would never use it because yeah, I think it's garbage. But, you know, it is what it is. We all have our own opinions, right? Okay, so here we go with the guys. Now, so let's start with Janice. So for Janice, what they ended up doing is on this portal, um, players that fall from uh, Janice portal can now be damaged from uh, before they hit the ground. Previously, they were untargetable uh, until they actually hit the ground completely which was inconsistent with other banished effects. Okay, so going through the Janus portal now also has a unique sound to different. So, yeah, so a lot of times, and I know it, was, it used to drive me insane, I'd play like Cerberus or something like that, where I actually start breathing and all of a sudden Janus uh, ends up picking up the enemy and saving him pretty much. And I'm like, seriously, dude? Uh, and, and it does no damage. Now you can actually do damage as they go up and they come back down. So at least you'll get a couple more licks on them. They're not immune. Uh, Unstable Vortex. Unstable Vortex now damages enemies who are in between the two Vortex projectiles. Uh, a chain of energy connects the two orbs now, showing uh, this damage uh, area. Uh, enemies can still be a uh, double hit if they are um, where the orbs meet. So before, you know how it goes like this, like that. So now you're in the middle and pretty much if it goes up like that, you're going to get hit by once. But if it comes in on you, you're going to get the double damage. So that's pretty cool, I guess. So, so that way if you actually, you know, feel go somebody, they still take damage. Uh, through space and time, this ability can now uh, only ever do, it can only do up to 75% of the target's health now. And this ability, this audio has been adjusted to be audible as it travels. Whatever, dude. Uh, yeah. So I guess 75% of the, of the target's health. So what? You can't one-shot anybody anymore. <laughs> there goes those Janus snipes, right? Okay, Bakasora. Uh, they decrease the movement speed from 7 to 5% per stack. That can be pretty, pretty significant. It's bad, en no, it's bad enough that Bakasora, or however you say his name, it's hardly even played in arena, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's some people that are really good with them, and you see them every now and then. But one of the few things that he did have going for him is that movement spe speed um, that allowed him to get at a really tough spot. So it is what it is. Raw. A raw got a decrease of debuff um, for his speed of light. Now, it decreases movement speed from 6% to 5% per stack. So we're looking at 1% per stack. Are you really going to feel that? Eh, probably not. We'll see. We'll see. So Poseidon also got a movement um, debuff. So his uh, changing tides, uh, the, the, they actually decreased the movement by 5%. So it went from a 15% to a 10% at max tide. That's going to hurt a lot of Poseidon player feelings. Because I'm telling you, man, Poseidon out, if you've seen Poseidon Arena, man, they're like the Flash. The dude's like pew, 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 all over the place. Now, 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but 5% can is, is substantial. Especially if you're using some of these items that actually got a movement debuff on them. So, I mean, eesh, yeah, I can see uh, Poseidon players crying on that one. I welcome it, to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> uh, I don't really play Poseidon much, but I play against them a lot. Uh, but you know it is what it is. Okay, so Angie is basic his combustion basic attacks uh, basic attacking um, a god now provides two stacks of, of combustion. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Chermbog. So for Chermbog, they actually increase the attack speed um, of his vicious barrage. Uh, before it used to be 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 percent. Well, they increase it uh, by 40. So starting off, it went up by 20 percent. 45, so went up another 15%. 50, went up by 10%. It jumps up to 55, so at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4th stage, only goes up by 5, and then it stays the same at, at max. Um, so they pretty much gave you a little bit more boost at the first three stages. 
So that's pretty cool, I guess. And they actually decreased, which, because, I mean, if you know, with uh, Chernbog at the early stages, man, I mean, his cooldowns are horrendous. So he, his escape and all that, it just takes forever. So having a little bit more with the barrage, I think, is fair. I definitely think it's fair. And they decreased the mana cost, you know, by 10%, or by 10. Okay, Sharon. Uh, Sharon, they actually did a buff so now his um herbal medication and it can in addition to healing his in his uh, allies it actually gives them physical power now also so they actually get five plus one per level physical power when they get healed by that herbal medicine so it's pretty cool that's pretty cool okay chronos they increase the attack speed per level from 0.8 percent to 1.5 percent almost a what whole point oh well, no heck eight percent uh to about 0.7 percent so yeah almost a hundred percent increase so that's pretty significant man that's definitely pretty significant just shy of a hundred percent um buff um st stopping time they increase the scaling of this from 40 percent to 45 percent so a total of 80 percent to 90 percent on this one so i mean that's pretty significant too we knew this was coming don's burrow uh he got hit with the nerf stick. Uh, he didn't get hit too hard, but he did get hit with the nerf stick. So Duvia's savings, um, it got decreased. The bonus power from each each palace got decreased by four, which actually is a pretty good uh, whack with that nerf stick. Um, yeah, and we knew it was coming, dude, because this dude was OP. <laughs> He's probably still OP. So Fool's Go, they decreased the base damage from Fool's Go from 70, 125, 180, 235, and 290 to 70, 120. So stage 2 is reduced by 5. Uh, 170, stage 3 got reduced by 10. 220, stage uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 got reduced by, what, 15? And then... Uh, 270 at the end so the last bit got reduced by 30 so late game uh donsboro really got kicked <laughs> um yeah that's gonna be interesting to see it's definitely gonna be interesting to see he's still gonna be pretty powerful don't get me wrong he didn't get nerfed as bad as a merling or a baron when they first got nerfed but I, to tell you the truth i think this is just the first nerf of more to come for this little hunter and it's and it breaks my heart too because i really love to play him okay Finn rear Fenrir is one of the few assassins I actually enjoy playing in Arena. And I'm telling you right now, after this <laughs> update, there's going to be a lot of people playing Fen Fenrir. Because they just made him OP <laughs> with a capital O and a capital P. So what they ended up doing is Unchained got increased physical power scaling from 80% to 95% power scaling. So they added 15% power scaling to his Unchained, which is off the chain. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, seething how they Im uh, it immediately generates two ruin upon cast. So I mean, if you're just running around trying to build your ruins, just keep hitting it, cool down, hitting it again, and eventually you'll be max ruin. Or if you know you need to build two before you jump in, bam. So that's pretty significant. You'll always have at least two ruins with every time you use it before you go into an attack. So yeah, that's that's gonna be pretty significant. And then uh, brutalize. They increase the a AOE damage from 50% of brutalized damage to 60% of its damage. Again, Fenrir is going to be, he's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be OP, dude, for real. Uh, uh, Hachiman. So what they did for Hachiman, they actually decreased the cooldown of his eagle eye by two seconds. Which, you know, could be pretty good. It's pretty good. 14 seconds and 12 seconds. It doesn't sound like much, but tell me, as a Cerberus uh, player, <laughs> I can tell you that's a big, it's a big jump. Okay, so mounted archery. They fix an issue where Hachiman can fire other abilities while uh, exiting the ultimate um, earlier than intended. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Tell you the truth, I'm not much of a Hachiman player, so whatever, dude. Hercules. Earthbreak, like, like if Hercules wasn't OP enough, right? <laughs> so now his Earthbreaker now actually does more damage. So before it was doing 80, 125, 170, 215, and 260, plus 50% of his physical item power, right? So now what it does, instead of 80, it does 90. So they upped it by 10, uh, 140. So they added, what, another 15. Uh, and then it goes to 190. So they added another 30. Uh, 20 20 and then um 
from 215 to 140 and then from uh, 260 to 290. So the end result, you end up doing a 30 points more damage. But here's the kicker. Now 60% of your physical item power. So whereas before you're getting an additional 50%, you're getting an additional 10% of your physical item power. Now, as, a, as someone that just recently started playing Hercules, for the first time in our last build, I can tell you usually Hercules doesn't have a lot of uh, physical item power. So any little uh, extra percentage that you can give him is going to go a long way, as you all know. Uh, Izazami. So her death brings nigh. Uh, Izazami sickles projectile speed increase as she gains attack speed. So this should uh, result more closely with her sickle returning before the second one fires. So I guess before, you know, as her sickles go backwards and forwards, it, uh, the more attack speed you got, the return, I guess, was slow or something. So now it's going to be like a laser. Now it's going to go really, really fast. So it's going to allow her power to do a lot more damage, at least on the, on the um, return. So that could be actually pretty significant. We'll see. Um, Merlin, Merlin, oh my lord. Merlin's actually getting another debuff, which yeah, that breaks my heart, man. So his frost bolt is getting decreased in scaling from 60 to 55%. Only 5%, but 5% on top of all the other debuffs that this gun has gotten since he came out, right? And then uh, Radiate, they de decrease the time between ticks on this. So you're going to end up getting 50% faster ticks on his radiate which is good people take faster damage that's definitely going to help for with um healing over time types um gods and then change they changed um the amount of damage they actually nerfed that too whereas before you're getting 10 20 30 40 50 plus 30 percent of your magic power now you're only going to get 6 12 18 24 and 30 so at the top end you're losing 20 at the very beginning you're losing four so man that's oh that yeah that's pretty uh his dot just took a really big hit and that's really <laughs> not going to make a lot of merlin uh, players happy i tell you that right now so realistically if a total now you you lost about 40 points total on that um on that attack now the only difference is now there's actually you're actually going to get more scaling uh, depending on your attack powers whereas before you got all that attack plus you know um 120 percent of your damage or uh, now you're getting plus 144 percent of uh, your item power so we'll see per tick so we'll see how that works i guess because of the faster ticks you end up doing more damage i guess that's how that how they equated to that okay niza i guess that's how you say her name this is actually one of the few guys we haven't played on our channel yet. So I probably should, um, <coughs> it's probably a good thing I waited. So now I can actually play her with this new, um, this new, um, uh, buff or debuff, right? So her flaming spear, uh, he'll change from 0.75% of your maximum health per stack to two, four, six, eight, and 10 plus 10% of your physical power per stack so instead of doing that flat point uh, point seven five percent of your max health now it's going to be actually staged i don't know if that's going to be good or bad i don't know if that's going to be more or less again i've never played this god ever so i don't know so hey put it down in the comments down below if you think this is going to be better or worse because i do not know <laughs> uh her, was it our Ar sash uh this ability can no longer crit Ooh, anytime they take away crit from an actual special attack, that sucks. That is horrible. Um, and they increase the damage, but they increase the damage from 70, 100, 130, 160, 190 to 70, 120. So at stage 2, they added 20. Uh, 170, so they added 40 there. Um, 220, and then 270. So I guess top end, they took away the crit, but, but top end, they actually um, added damage so we'll see how that works out and then they increase the scaling from a hundred percent to 150 percent which is holy moly a lot <laughs> as a 50 percent increase on on scaling so i guess they took away the crit but i guess they they made up for it i guess in the in, in the in a different way again i've never played this god so i don't know how significant that's going to be and then wildfire wheels they increase the beads um window from the fire wheels um uh, <clears throat> to 0.4 seconds 
uh, okay. And upon landing, you gain 20, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 protections for five seconds. So I guess they added, they added protections. I don't know. Again, I don't play this guy. So hey, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, Regime, uh, his uh, percussive storm. And my throat's getting dry, and I don't have no drink with me. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect this to be this long, actually. Uh, but this decreased the cooldown by one second. And big whoop. Uh, Reju decreased the cooldown from 16, uh, 16, 15, 14, 13 to 12 to 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10. So pretty much two seconds across the board, which is pretty good. It's definitely pretty good. Thunder Crash increased the scaling of lightning and thunder damage from 20% to 30%. So from 40 to 60% total. Uh, that's pretty significant, actually. That is pretty significant. That's going to be a, a good buff for that attack. Rama. His, uh, 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 Astral Barrage. They fixed an issue where Rama can fire other abilities while exiting the ultimate earlier than intended. Again, I'm not a Rama player. Didn't know this was a thing. So now, if you're a Rama player, there you go. And then finally, uh, Soul. So for so, what they ended up doing is unstable manifestation. They increased the attack speed from one percent to point up to uh, one point two percent. So what that's going to do is going to give you a total of, at max at twenty from um, twenty five to thirty percent. You get an extra five percent on that. And then stellar burst they increase the damage from thirty five percent to forty percent. So you're going to get an overall total of ten percent increase on that from seventy to eighty percent damage. So hey. That's pretty much it, man. As you can see, there is a significantly gigantic bunch of changes that's coming with this new update. Again, um, I think it comes out January 26th. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm not 100%. I'll have to double check on that. But hey, you know, keep an eye out for these changes, man. I'm telling you, these are <laughs> this is probably some of the most changes they've done in a long time. And, it, and I guess it, it falls in line with the new season, right? So you're going to have a, uh, you have to hit the new season of the new year with a big bang. And here soon, they're also going to start coming. They're already teasing the um, the new gods too. You know, they're, they're saying that the, the at 8.2, they're going to get the Tiamat uh, god. And Gila Mesh is coming out at uh, 8.4. And then we're going to get another god at 8.6, another one at 8.8, .8, another one at 8.10, another 8.12. So that's a, a bunch of gods. <laughs> that's definitely a, a good amount of gods that are going to be coming out soon. So that will be interesting. And to tell you the truth, I haven't really been looking um, too deep into what these guys are. So, hey, that might be another video coming up in the future. You know, to start doing some research on these guys and see what, what they're going to be and how good they're going to be, right? Yeah, but that's pretty much it, man. I don't want to drag on this video any longer than it already has been. But yeah, that's Season 8. Remember, uh, uh, January 26th, that's the magic day. January 26th. And if you, and that's when that new... Uh, if you haven't got your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles done, you definitely want to do that uh, by January 6th when that uh, new Battle Pass goes active and the new uh, Season t t uh, 2021 Battle Pass goes active. But hey... That does it for our show today. Again, uh, a million thank yous for all of you guys that uh, that have been hanging with us since day one and all our subscribers that come along the way and all our viewers that are viewing our channel. February 1st is actually our one-year anniversary and we're almost to our goal of 2,000 subscribers. Now, when we first started this channel, man, I just had to go and get having 100 subscribers, but we ended up just skyrocketing to 1,000 subscribers within the first four or five months that or six months that we were um, live on our channel. It just blew my mind on the all the love that we received from all of our awesome, awesome viewers and subscribers from around the world. So a million thank yous with that. And hey, if you're watching our videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. You know, help us out to try to get to that 2,000 uh, subscriber mark. And I and that's pretty much it. Oh, and a million thank yous to everybody that's been using our um, affiliate links. As you all know, we're Amazon and Hi-Res affiliates. They have affiliate links in the description of each of our videos. And there's been a lot of our viewers that have actually been using our um, subscriber links to um, for the Smite Store. Uh, you know, if you're already going to use, you know, buy something for the Smite Store, why not use our links and help out the channel like a lot of you have been doing? And we really appreciate that. We really do. Um, but yeah. 
I mean, again, a million thank you. So that's pretty much our show for today. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm Dark Garza, your OG on the GC. See you next time.